Aprende inglés paso a paso. Lección 16. Nivel avanzado. Paso 1. Gramática 1. Verb to keep plus gerund. The first one is seguir haciendo algo, which in English is to keep doing something. Mm -hmm. Okay? Nada de to follow. No, 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 no. Always okay. with to keep, okay? Vale. To keep doing something. The second use is deja de hacer algo. En imperativo, por ejemplo, deja de hacerlo. Don't keep doing it. Uh -huh. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the third use is cuando algo nos molesta. Okay? Mm -hmm. For example, um, él no deja de hacerlo. He keeps doing it. Mm -hmm. Ejercicios a traducir. Seguir haciendo algo o deja de hacer algo. ¿Ok? Vale. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Sigue. Ya casi estás. Keep going. <clears throat> Excuse me. Keep going. You're nearly there. And again? <clears throat> Keep going. You're nearly there. Good. Keep going. You're nearly there. Tienes que seguir intentándolo. Algún día conseguirás un trabajo. You must keep trying. You'll get a job one day. Eso es. You must keep trying. You'll get a job one day. Sigan mandándonos sus donativos. Eh, Um, hay que recaudar tanto dinero como sea posible. Keep sending in your donations. We need to raise as much money as possible. Muy bien. Keep sending in your donations. We need to raise as much money as possible. Deja de hacer preguntas estúpidas. Sorry. <laughs> Don't keep asking stupid questions. Okay, good. There are no stupid questions when no, it comes no. to learning English. But for this example, the translation is Don't keep asking stupid questions. Deja de gastar tu paga en caramelos, niño. Don't keep spending your pocket money. Money and sweet. Eso es. Y pocket money es la expresión británica uh -huh. y en los Estados Unidos se dice allowance. Okay? Allowance. So uh -huh. sería en los Estados Unidos, don't keep spending your allowance on sweets. Okay? Okay. Deja de quitarte los zapatos. <laughs> <laughs> don't keep taking your shoes off. Good. Don't keep taking your shoes off. O también, don't keep taking off your shoes. Okay. Uh -huh. Ahora en contextos cuando algo nos molesta. Okay? Vale. Esa empresa de telemarketing no deja de llamarme. That telemarketing company keeps phoning me. Muy bien. Se puede decir tanto keeps phoning me o keeps on phoning me también. Ajá. Ok, los dos valen. Para más énfasis. Sí, ma supongo que sí, para un pelín más. Ok. Vale. Eh, mi vecina no deja de hablar de sus nietos. My neighbor keeps on going on about her grandchildren. Muy bien. My neighbor keeps on going on about her grandchildren. Mi dentista no deja de cancelarme las citas. My dentist keeps on cancelling my appointments. Good. My Dentist keeps on cancelling my appointments. How annoying. Okay. Cuando era joven, mi hermano no dejaba de pegarme. When I was young, my brother kept on hitting me. Muy bien. When I was young, my brother kept on hitting me. Mi jefe no deja de, de darme demasiado trabajo. My boss keeps on giving me too much work. Muy bien. Uh, con on o sin on. Okay. That one. My boss mm -hmm. keeps giving me too much work. Oh, my boss keeps on giving me too much work. Y para terminar, mi coche no deja de calarse. My car keeps on stalling. Muy bien, stalling. My car keeps on stalling. Paso dos. Exprésate como un nativo. But it's not that good. But it's not that interesting. Okay, this is our expression of the week. And it means, pero no es para tanto, but only in the kind of sentences that we're going to look at here. Ejercicios a traducir. Es bueno, pero no es para tanto. ¿Sería? Uh -huh. It's good, but it's not that good. Very good. Con esa intonación, okay? It's good, but it's not that good, okay? Mm -hmm. Y luego, es interesante, pero no es para tanto. It's interesting, but it's not that interesting. Muy bien. It's interesting, but it's not that interesting. Es importante, pero no es para tanto. It's important, but it's not that important. Muy bien. It's important, but it's not that important. Es grande, pero no es para tanto. It's big, but it's not that big. Good. And again? It's big, but it's not that big. Perfect. Es sabroso, pero no es para tanto. It's tasty, but it's not that tasty. Exactly. It's tasty, but it's not that tasty. Y es emocionante, pero no es para tanto. It's exciting, but it's not that 
mad exciting. Good. Okay, now, you in Spanish and me in English, okay? Vale. Es verdad. Es difícil, pero no es para tanto. True. It's difficult, but it's not that difficult. Es verdad. Es complicado, pero no es para tanto. True. It's complicated, but it's not that complicated. Claro que sí. Él es gracioso, pero no es para tanto. Sure. He's funny, but he's not that funny. Claro que sí. Ella es guapa, pero no es para tanto. Sure. She's cute, but she's not that cute. Vale. Son listos, pero no es para tanto. Okay. They're clever, but they're not that clever. Vale. Es mandón, pero no es para tanto. Okay. He's bossy, but he's not that bossy. Y otra vez, una vez más. Okay. He's bossy, but he's not that bossy. Paso 3. Pronunciación. Start. He started. Okay. This week we're going to focus on the pronunciation of the verb start and its past participle started. The important thing here is that you do not say estar or estarted. Okay? okay. There is no extra syllable before the letter S. You have to begin with a long S sound. S start and start. Started. Ejercicios a traducir. And it's followed by another verb with the gerund, okay? Okay. When it has an ing ending, okay? Mm -hmm. Empezad a escribir cuando yo lo diga. Start Good. writing when I say so. Good. Start writing when I say so. ¿Podéis empeza, empezar a quitar la mesa? Can you start clearing the table? ¿Otra vez? Can you start clearing the table? Perfecto. Clearing the table es. Good. No empecé a aprender inglés hasta que tuvo 20 años. I didn't start learning English until I was 20. Eso es. I didn't start learning English until I was 20. El alcalde ha empezado a combatir el fraude fiscal. The mayor has started fighting tax fraud. Perfect pronunciation. The mayor has... Started fighting tax fraud. Acabo de empezar a asistir a clases de yoga. I've just started going to yoga classes. Perfect. Nada de started es I've just started going to yoga classes. Mm -hmm. ¿Has empezado a repasar para tus exámenes ya? Have you started revising for your exams yet? Good. Have you started revising for your exams yet? Okay, now, in these examples, Elena's going to test me. And in these ones, start will be followed by a verb expressed in the infinitive with two. Okay? Okay. All right. Cuando llegamos al parque, empezó a llover. When we got to the park, it started to rain. Ella empezó a llorar cuando le conté la noticia. She started to cry when I told her the news. Empezamos a tener miedo cuando vimos las medusas. We started to feel afraid when we saw the jellyfish. Estoy empezando a entender por qué lo hiciste. I'm starting to understand why you did it. Y en este caso no se podría decir I'm starting understanding. Okay. ¿No? <laughs> sí. Sí, es, aquí solo puede ser I'm starting to understand. Um, yes, that's true. Sí, no suena raro, ¿verdad? Sí, exacto. Y además creo que es porque eh, el verbo to understand no es un verbo de acción. Es, y por eso I'm no starting. podemos decir I'm starting understanding ni I'm starting knowing. Es I'm starting to know and I'm starting to understand. Okay. Okay. All right. Next. Puedes empezar a prestar un poco más de atención, por favor. Can you start to pay a bit more attention, please? <laughs> Él solo empezará a relajarse después de un par de días de vacaciones. He'll only start to relax after a couple of days on holiday. Paso cuatro. Phrasal verb. To egg on. Repito. To egg. Sí, huevo. To egg on. No tiene nada que ver con huevos. ¿Ok? Lo que significa es incitar a alguien a hacer algo. ¿Ok? To egg on. To egg someone on. Ajá. Y egging on es el sustantivo. Y lo que significa es um, incitación. Ejercicios a traducir. ¿Por qué estás siempre incitando a tu hermano a hacer travesuras? Why are you always egging your brother on to do naughty things? Muy bien. Se puede decir. Why are you always egging your brother on? Oh, why are you always egging on your brother to do naughty things? Okay? Mm -hmm. Deja de incitar a los niños a hacer tonterías. Stop egging the children on to do silly things. Good. Stop egging the children on to do silly things. Incitó a su amigo a ir a la fiesta. Él. Uh -huh. he, egged, he egged his friend on. I can, I'm just picturing. <laughs> he egged his friend on to go to the party. 
you're picturing him throwing eggs at his friends, are you? Shredding <laughs> no, solamente significa incitó, sí, ¿ok? Sí, sí. He egged his friends on to go to the party. Él me incitó a tirarle huevos al político. He egged me on to throw eggs at the politician. Okay, good. You know. <laughs> of course, how obvious. He egged me on to throw eggs at the politician. Ella me está incitando a dejar mi trabajo. She's egging me on to leave my job. Good. She's egging me on to leave my job. ¿Por qué me incitaste a invitar a esa chica a salir? Why did you egg me on to ask that girl out? Good. And again, Elena? Why did you egg me on to ask that girl out? Very good. Okay, now, your turn to put me to the test, please. Vale, pues voy. Él no quería hacerlo, pero la multitud le incitó tanto que dio. He didn't want to do it, but the crowd egged him on so much that he gave in. Ella estaba rehacia al principio, pero la incitaron tanto que cedió. She was reluctant at first, but they egged her on so much that she gave in. Todo el mundo le incitó tanto que al final cedió. Everyone egged him on so much that he eventually gave in. Ella se negó al principio, pero al final, después de tanta incitación, cedió. Ok, aquí con el sustantivo, ok. She refused at first, but in the end, after so much egging on, she gave in. No creo que él pueda soportar mucha más incitación. Va a ceder. I don't think he can take much more egging on. He's going to give in. Yo creo que si le incitamos lo suficiente, al final cederá. I reckon that if we egg him on enough, he'll eventually give in. Ok, Elena, did I do a good job? You did a great job. Ok, thanks for saying so. <laughs> All right. Paso cinco. Vocabulario. Internet y ordenadores. Arrastrar y dejar. Drag and drop. Menú desplegable. Drop down menu. Foro. Forum. Un clic con el botón derecho del ratón. A right mouse click. Colgarse. To crash. Estar averiado. To be down. Bajar o descargarse. To download. Subir o cargarse. To upload. Ejercicios. A traducir. Mi ordenador no para de colgarse, Elena. My computer keeps crashing. Good. My computer keeps crashing. Keeps con gerundio. Mm -hmm. Okay. My computer keeps crashing. El archivo aún no ha empezado a descargarse. File hasn't started downloading yet. Muy bien, y started con gerundio. The file hasn't started downloading yet. Haz clic con el botón derecho del ratón en la página y elige opciones en el menú desplegable. Right mouse click on the page and choose options from the drop down menu. Good. Right mouse click on the page and choose options from the drop down menu. No me puedo creer que la red esté averiada de nuevo. I can't believe the network's down again. Good. I can't believe the network's down again. No sé subir fotos a este foro. I don't know how to upload photos to this forum. Muy bien. Es I don't know how to upload photos to this forum. Good. Arrastra y deja cada archivo para moverlos a otra carpeta. Drag and drop each file to move them to a different folder. Good. Y muy rápido así. Drag and drop each file to move them to a different folder. La página está aver averiada. Tendremos que bajarlo lo luego. The web page is down. We'll have to download it later. Good. The web page <coughs> is down. We'll have to download it later. Tienes que iniciar sesión para utilizar el foro. You need to log in to use the forum. Good. You need to log in to use the forum. Haz clic con el botón derecho del ratón aquí para subir tus archivos. Right mouse click here to upload your files. Good. Right mouse click here to upload your files. No me puedo creer que el portátil se me haya vuelto a colgar. I can't believe my laptop's crashed again. Oh, in unbelievable. Mm. I can't believe my laptop's crashed again. Arrastralo y déjalo en la carpeta que se llama fotos. Drag and drop it into the folder called photos. Perfect. Drag and drop it into the folder called photos. And finally, el menú desplegable no funciona. ¿Qué hago? The drop down menu isn't working. What do I do? The drop down menu isn't working. What do I do? Great job, Elena. You too. Paso seis. Gramática 2. Not as much as and less than. Okay, these are two ways of saying the same thing in English, okay? In Spanish, when you have a negative sentence, for example, no tengo tanto dinero como él, in English you have to use the structure not as much money as him. Mm -hmm. I don't have as much money as him. Okay. Tengo cuidado no decir I don't have as much money than him. No, okay. no, 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 no. Okay? okay. I don't have as much money as him, okay? All right. When the sentence is expressed in 
in the affirmative. Mm -hmm. For example, tengo menos dinero que mi jefe. Mm -hmm. uh, in English, we use the structure less than. I have less money than him, than mm -hmm. my boss. Okay? okay. And the reason that we use much and less is because in these examples, we're going to work with uncountable nouns. Okay. okay. Like money, time, sand, etc. Okay. All right. When we talk about countable nouns, we have to use two different words, which is um, fewer. Mm -hmm. I have fewer um, chairs than him, for example. <laughs> and uh, many. I don't have as many friends as him. Okay. Ejercicios a traducir. Give you a sentence with uh, less than. Uh -huh. And I want you to change the sentence to uh, the structure not as much as. Okay. All right. I eat less food than I used to. I don't eat as much food as I used to. Good. She has less free time than her husband. She doesn't have as much free time as her husband. Good. She doesn't have as much free time as her husband. Neither they than. Okay. As, 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 as. As, 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 as. Good. <laughs> I want you to cut less hair than the last time. I don't want you to cut, to cut as much hair as the last time. Good. Developing countries cause less pollution than developed ones. Developing countries don't cause cause as much pollution as developed ones. Good. The new neighbors make less noise than the previous ones. The new neighbors don't make as much noise as the previous ones. Good. As, as. The Portuguese produce less wine than the Spanish. Portuguese don't produce as much wine as the Spanish. Good. Everybody eats less rice than the Chinese. <laughs> Nobody eats as much rice as the Chinese. Good. She knows less vocabulary than her brother. She doesn't know as much vocabulary as her brother. Okay, good. Now we're going to flip it. We're going to reverse it okay. and change the sentences from as much as, not as much as, to less than. Okay. All right. Let's flip it. Uh, let's flip it. Okay. <laughs> I don't have as much time as I need. I have less time than I need. There isn't as much nitrogen as ox oxygen in the air. There is less nitrogen than oxygen in the air. He won't play as much rugby as as football at school. He'll play less rugby than football at school. You don't do as much homework as you should. You do less homework than you should. I didn't make as much money as you did on that investment. I made less money than you did on that investment. He didn't cause as much trouble as his friend did. He caused less trouble than his friend did. Don't add as much salt as pepper. Add less salt than pepper. Why don't you listen to as much classical music as pop music? Why do you listen to less classical music than pop music? Good. Okay, so it's not as as much as and less than. Okay. Paso siete. Verbos irregulares. Derramar, despojarse de. Every day I shed. And yesterday I shed. And lately I've shed. Good. Agarrarse. Every day I cling. And yesterday I clung. And lately I've clung. Good. Cerrar. Every day I shut. And yesterday I shut. And lately I've shut. Muy bien. Okay. La tienda cerró temprano. Shop shut early. Good. Sh -sh. The shop shut early. Good. Ejercicios a traducir. Good. El cerezo se despojó de sus hojas a finales de noviembre. The cherry tree shed its leaves in late November. Good. The cherry tree shed its leaves in late November. Esta semana la frutería ha cerrado temprano todos los días. The green grocers has shut early every day this week. Eso es. The green grocers has shut early every day this week. Derramé unas cuantas lágrimas en el cobertizo. Por I know. I shed a tear or two in the shed. In the shed. Good. El cobertizo también es el sustantivo. Es in the shed. Good. Mm -hmm. La serpiente que tengo de mos mascota acaba de despojarse de su piel. Ugh. My pet snake has just shed its skin. <laughs> My pet snake has just shed its skin. Él cerró la puerta, gritó y le pegó un tiro al vaquero. He shut the door, shouted and shot the cowboy. Perfect pronunciation of your SHs. He shut the door, shouted and shot the cowboy. All right. Not the sheriff. No, not the sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> like the famous song, right? Mm. Él se rompió el dedo cuando se lo pilló con la puerta. Un uso okay. interesante de mm, shot. Mm -hmm. He broke his finger when he shot shut it in the door. Eso es. Pillarse un dedo en una puerta, por ejemplo, es to shut your finger in the door. Ok. Se derramó mucha sangre en la guerra. A lot of blood was shed in the war. Good. A lot of blood was shed in the war. Ok. Put me to the test, Elena. Oy. El gato se agarró a la rama hasta que vinieron los bomberos. The cat clung to the branch until the fire brigade came. Los supervivientes se agarraron a un trozo de madera flotante durante 12 horas. Wow. The survivors clung to a piece of floating wood for 12 hours. 
hours. El bebé se agarró a su madre durante la travesía. The baby clung to its mother during the crossing. Me agarré a una farola durante la peor parte de la tormenta. Okay, my last test. I clung to a lamppost during the worst part of the storm. Okay, good job. Paso 8. Comprensión auditiva. Ejercicios. It wasn't supposed to rain today. Now, how am I going to get to my car without getting soaked to the bone? What time is our next meeting? If we have time, I'd rather wait until the storm blows over before crossing the street to the parking lot. In fact, I'd rather arrive late for the meeting than walk in soaking wet. Okay, Lena, a couple of questions to see how well you understood our paragraph this week. Okay, question one. What uh, does the narrator, or in this case me, mm -hmm. what does the narrator want to do with Without getting soaked. Well, you want mm -hmm. to get to your car. That's it. I want to get to my car. Is it raining? Yes, it is. It is good. raining. It's raining. Very good. Um, number three. What does? What do I prefer? What would I prefer to do if I had time? Uh, if you had time, you'd prefer to wait until the storm blows over. Very good. What does blow over mean in Spanish, Elena? A minar. That's it. When, when you talk about a storm. When you talk about a storm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, I would prefer to wait until the storm blew over, for example. Number four. Where is my car parked? Your car's parked in a parking lot. That's remember? right. <laughs> I'm a bit forgetful, I have to admit. My car is parked in a parking lot. And number five, uh, what do I want to avoid by waiting? I want to avoid getting soaking wet. That's right. Soaking wet is an expressive way to say very wet. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to avoid getting soaking wet. Excellent job. Paso nueve. Números. Sustantivos como adjetivos, dos. Okay, Elena, last week we saw some adjectives that consist of number and a noun with a hyphen in the middle. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. for example, um, a three-person family. Mm -hmm. Okay, a three-hyphen person family. We never say a three-persons family. Mm, okay. It's always expressed in the singular. Okay, this week we're going to continue working on this kind of adjective, but this week we're going to focus more on distances, okay? Mm -hmm. For example, un viaje de 10 millas, ¿qué sería? A 10 mile trip. Okay. Ejercicios. Fue un viaje de 70 millas entre mi casa y la de Jane. It was a 70 mile journey. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Cough. It was a 70 mile journey between my house and Jane's. Good. It was a 70 mile journey between my house and Jane's. Good. Hice una caminata de 30 millas en los Pirineos. I went on a 30 mile hike in the Pyrenees. Good. Perfect pronunciation. Pyrenees. I went on a 30 mile, nada de 30 miles. Nope. I went on a 30 mile hike in the Pyrenees. Solo es un viaje en coche de 5 kilómetros a la estación desde mi casa. It's only a 5 kilometer drive to the station from my house. Good, repeat it. It's only a 5 kilometer drive to the station from my house. Perfect. Kilometer, can you also say kilometer? No, no. that kilometer, pronunciation, kilometer. no. It's kilometer. Vale. Okay. Uh, you can also say it's only a 5K drive uh -huh. to the station from my house. Okay. Hicieron un viaje de 400 kilómetros para estar en la boda. They made a 400 kilometer journey in order to be at the wedding. Good. They made a 400 kilometer journey in order to be at the wedding. What dedication. Okay. That's a long journey. It is. Es un viaje en coche de 10 kilómetros hasta llegar a la otra oficina. It's a 10 kilometer drive to get to the other office. Perfect. It's a 10 kilometer drive to get to the other office. Corrí 10 kilómetros con mi vecino. I went on a 10 kilometer run with my neighbor. Good. I went on a 10 kilometer run with my neighbor. Participamos en una carrera de 25 kilómetros el sábado Pasado. We took part in a 25k race last Good. Saturday. Perfect. We took part in a 25k race or a 25 kilometer race last Saturday. All right, I want you to put me to the test, Elena. Okay. Let's go. Dimos un paseo de tres millas. We went for a three mile walk. Hizo el trayecto de 20 kilómetros a la estación a pie. He made the 20 kilometer trip to the station by foot. Volvieron de una acampada de 10 días en el parque de Yellowstone. Okay. They came back from a 10 day camping 
camping trip in Yellowstone Park. Mi casa es un apartamento de tres dormitorios y dos baños. My home is a three bed, two bath apartment. Cercaron un área de 20 manzanas para buscar al fugitivo. They shut down a 20 block radius to search for the fugitive. Ella llevaba un anillo de diamantes de 5 kilates. She was wearing a five carat diamond ring. Corrí mi primera carrera de 5 kilómetros el domingo. I ran my first 5k race on Sunday. Congratulations. Thanks, Elena. Paso 10. El repaso. Deja de quitarte los zapatos. Don't keep taking your shoes off. Mi jefe no deja de darme demasiado trabajo. My boss keeps on giving me too much work. Mi coche no deja de calarse. My car keeps on stalling. Es interesante, pero no es para tanto. It's interesting, but it's not that interesting. Claro que sí, él es gracioso, pero no es para tanto. Sure, he's funny, but it's not that funny. Vale, son listos, pero no es para tanto. Okay, they're clever, but they're not that clever. ¿Podéis empezar a quitar la mesa? Can you start clearing the table? Empezamos a tener miedo cuando vimos las, me las medusas. We started to feel afraid when we saw the jellyfish. Él solo empezará a relajarse después de un par de días de vacaciones. He'll only start to relax after a couple of days on holiday. Él me incitó a tirar huevos al político. He egged me on to throw eggs at the politician. Ella estaba rehace al principio, pero la incitaron tanto que cedió. She was reluctant at first, but they egged her on so much that she gave in. No creo que él pueda soportar mucha más incitación. Va a ceder. I don't think he can take much more egging on. He's going to give in. No sé subir fotos a este foro. I don't know how to upload photos to this forum. Haz clic con el botón derecho del ratón aquí para subir tus archivos. Right mouse click here to upload your files. No me puedo creer que el portal til se me haya vuelto a colgar. I can't believe my laptop's crashed again. I want you to cut less hair than the last time. I don't want you to cut as much hair as the last time. He won't play as much rugby as football at school. He'll play less rugby than football football at school. Don't add as much salt as pepper. Add less salt than pepper. El cerezo se despojó de sus hojas a finales de noviembre. Cherry tree shed its leaves in late November. Él cerró la puerta, gritó y le pegó un tiro al vaquero. He shut the door, shouted and shot the cowboy. Me agarré a una farola durante la peor parte de la tormenta. I clung to a lamppost during the worst part of the storm. Se supone que hoy no debía llover. It wasn't supposed to rain today. ¿A qué hora es nuestra próxima reunión? What time is our next meeting? Fue un viaje de 70 millas entre mi casa y la de Jane. It was a 70 mile journey between my house and Jane's. Hizo el trayecto de 20 kilómetros a la estación a pie. He made the 20 kilometer trip to the station by foot. Corrí mi primera carrera de 5 kilómetros el domingo. I ran my first 5k race on Sunday. Okay. And have you been doing 20 minutes of study a day? Si te ha gustado, no dudes en suscribirte al canal de YouTube y seguirnos en Facebook y redes sociales. Hasta el próximo vídeo.